Today on episode 463 of I Am Salt Lake Podcast, I get a chat with Phil in Gentry Davies, the owner of the Cluck Truck Food Truck. In this conversation, we get to talk about everything from what motivated them to start the food truck, their menu items, obstacles of being a small business owner in 2020, and how we can support them as a community. Phil and Gentry, they were awesome. I'm super stoked to play this conversation for them in just a moment. But before we get into that conversation, I think we should probably introduce ourselves. Hello, everyone. My name is Chrissy Hollifield. And my name is Chris Hollifield. And if this is your first time listening to this podcast, you may be wondering what it's all about. Well, this podcast is all about showcasing awesome people in Salt Lake City. We get to talk to authors, tattoo artists, restaurant owners, breweries, distilleries, food truck owners, really anyone that might have a cool story to share. And Merry Christmas to everybody on Friday. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah or... Happy holidays, winter solstice, everyone is included. Like everything is right there, you know, Happy, Christmas, New Year's, I boom, know. boom, boom. All inclusive cold season. <laughs> um, so I wasn't actually a part of this conversation with Phil and Gentry, and I'm so bummed. So I, I'm truly sorry to everybody that I wasn't able to make it. Um, I was actually helping our daughter sell some of her art and jewelry at a holiday maker's market, and I had really hoped that I would be able to be uh, get back in time to, to be able to record with you, but I didn't. And I just want to thank Chris for picking up the charge when I'm busy doing life stuff and just keeping it going. Especially since I found out that Phil was from your home state. This is killing me because I need to, I hate, uh, I hate that I don't know. And I couldn't talk Wisconsin for but, just a minute. But it, it was interesting because it really proved to me that you make the podcast, you know, cause I used <laughs> to do all of these conversations with just myself. I used to do right. all of them, just me. With you not there, it was like, okay, something's missing. I'm missing like my left leg here. You're like someone is not throwing the conversation off. Where is that? <laughs> yeah, no. I'm glad you're okay with it. Thanks. But you know what? I kind of want to talk about my favorite coffee. Let's do it. Ooh, guess what it is? It's Hugo Coffee. I didn't even let you guess because you already know. Uh, Hugo Coffee Roasters, they are so wonderful. They are all about saving dogs one bag of coffee at a time. 10% of their net profits go to dog rescue organizations to provide shelter, beds, veterinary care, and toys, all so they can be happy and healthy until they get adopted. Hugo Coffee is a craft coffee roastery based right out of Park City, and what's really cool is that their head roaster, John, he selects the highest quality beans with a rich flavor profile for a wide range of roasts from light to dark and even an espresso roast. Go check this out. Their website, hugo.coffee. Really easy to remember. Go check it out. Go check out all the different coffee they have available. I am Salt Lake Podcast listeners. We created a very, very special promo code just for you. If you enter the promo code podcast, when you're at checkout, you're going to get the super awesome deal for our listeners, which is buy one bag, get the second bag 50% off, and we're even going to throw in free shipping. How awesome is that? And I just want to throw in there, too. Our, our promo code does not cover this on their site, but you still have to try it. They have uh, kind of coffee bags. They're oh, like tea bags. Perfect for traveling. Oh, my gosh. I have been using them like crazy, and they are just the best thing. I love them. Go check them out. But anyway, again, the website is hugo.coffee. You can check out the Black Paw French Roast, the Bonafido Dark Roast, and so many more. So many amazing roasts. Just remember to use the promo code PODCAST to get yourself the exclusive buy one, get the second bag 50% off and free shipping just for I Am Salt Lake podcast listeners and your friends. All right. Here's that conversation that I had with Phil and Gentry Davies, the owners of the Cluck Truck Food Truck. Such a rad couple, such a rad conversation. Let's get into it. Boom, bada, bing. The idea of the Cluck Truck. Okay. Whose idea of it? Which out of the two of you, whose idea was it? So it was Phil's idea to start the food truck. So we've both worked in hospitality for, I did for eight years. He did for 10 years. <clears throat> um, so it was probably his idea to actually open the truck. Our idea was to find, to find a truck, build it out over the winter. And then the following spring, he would start doing the food truck. And then we actually just happened to run into... Um, there's a lady, her name's Holly Cloyd. She, they own Nomad Eatery. So they actually had a cluck truck. They had ran it for one season and decided it wasn't for them. So they were selling the truck 
And we were like, oh, we wanted to do a fried chicken truck. And they had the, the setup we wanted as far as like fryers, stuff in the truck that we wanted. So we went down there to look at the truck and we just loved the name so much. We were like, hey, let's just rebrand it as Cluck Truck, but Cluck Truck by us, not nothing at Holly. She's she's a great lady. She's super. Yeah. <laughs> she's good at everything she does. <laughs> but we basically just were like, hey, this is this is basically what we wanted. Let's keep the same name, change up a few things and make it our own. Very cool. And now, yeah. what year was this? Did you say? Uh, 2018. Okay. So you've been doing this truck for a couple of years. Did either one of you, I mean, either one of you work in a food truck prior to this at all? No, <laughs> not at all. We bartended for a while. Uh, so I mean, we, we were around food, sure. but neither of us were ever really like a cook. <laughs> my mother was, my mother was, um, but yeah, no, I guess if it counts, my mother worked back in a food truck probably was like i would say 1992 so i was i was a young i was a young child and she was a single mother and i think she worked at a food truck and i just happened to find that out just but yeah so that was back in the day as far as us personally never never would have thought that we were going to have a food truck and definitely not a food truck and I, we knew we wanted to do something but just for ourselves i guess yeah. in general just doing something for ourselves. And this happened to be the best, uh, best thing at that moment in our lives in 2018. And it, it came about with the cluck truck. So Holly, she had a great idea, uh, but we made it ours and we were trying to do, we were just, Hey, we love what we want to do. We, we know we wanted to go with uh, a food theme of fried chicken. And here we are cluck truck. Um, just trying to brand ourselves, trying to sell our passion, what we want to do within the community. Just wanted to be part of that. So you started it in 2018 and now it's 2020. So two years yeah. later now, is it everything you imagined it? Is it as awesome as you imagined it? Do you love doing it? I do. Personally, myself, in all honesty, yes. I enjoy what I do. There's so many, uh, so many things of my day that make my day as to why we are a club truck or why I can't wait to go to work. I can't wait to wake up and go to work, no matter if it's a lunch shift, dinner shift, everyday shift, doubles, personally. Yeah, yeah. imagine that. I can't wait to go to work. Ah, let's go. Let's go grind. Let's go do that. Let's, let's get that oomph. What makes, what gives you that oomph? And to me, it's that. I can't wait to be in the kitchen and just creating. And it's just like, bam, let's go today. This is our special. This is what we're going to run with this afternoon. And just being able to put that out there. And yeah, it's it's the oomph in me. to. I can't wait to go to my kitchen. I love that. That's how I wake up every morning. I wake up, <laughs> I have a routine. And you know, if I'm on my local news feed, whatever it is, and try to get my daily news, get my coffee and go to work. So I love it. I would not change it. Very cool. Very cool. It's hard to find a <laughs> job that you love, right? Like a, a lot of people, you know, they dread Mondays, they dread going to work. They live for the weekends. The moment you can find something that you're really passionate about and that you love, it's like, you got to hold on to that, man. You got to hold on. And to we that. meet people like that every single day though. That's the thing. Another reason why I do love doing that is because those people that, really do feel that way and that do have those type of careers, jobs or whatnot. I personally serve lunch to those people and people have to eat every day. So we're out there and we're seeing those people that are still fortunately out to be at work it, but pre COVID being able to interact with a whole different type of crowd was it's priceless in a way like, man, you meet so many new people being in the food truck industry. I could, uh, I could imagine, you so, know, I could you imagine. Know, Super cool. Where do you guys usually park it? I mean, I guess it's all over. You you probably work the valley. I mean, even go down to Utah County and everywhere, right? Yeah, we try and stay in Salt Lake County as much as we can. We're we're both Salt Lakers at heart, so we really try to just stay as local as possible. Um, I mean, obviously, we do go to Utah and Davis counties, you know, um, occasionally, but I would say ninety five percent of the time we're somewhere in the Salt Lake Valley. Now, how are the restrictions in, in Salt Lake or, or maybe they were never bad because I heard, so like years ago when the chow truck was like the first food truck in Salt Lake city, uh, uh, the stories, uh, she kind of paved the, the, 
you know, the way for food trucks. And there were some tough restrictions. Are there a lot of restrictions still on food trucks that they can only like park in the same place and move every two hours or something like that? And those kind of rules or. I don't think we've really ran into any issues like that. There are a lot of restrictions as far as like where you can and can't park. Okay. We don't ever really just go like, oh, we're going to go post up on this corner today. <laughs> we usually have a more of a set schedule where we know where we're going every single day. I mean, we book out pretty far in advance. So we know, you know, what our calendar looks like and where we're going. Uh, I know for some people that they've had issues with that. We've never really ran into it just because we we already know where we're going. So you already have an agreement with somebody. So you don't have to worry about them being like, you got to go or you got to stay it's, longer. It, it's definitely <laughs> a challenge a challenge when you first start because you want to know. I'm getting this business, obviously, to make money, just like any business. So you have to understand by doing your research, if where, where can I make money? How, how am I going to be a successful food truck? And being with the challenges, what the challenges from city requirements, it, it, it's all different. It's just, we're just a mobile restaurant. So we do still have to abide by the health department, um, get inspected by the health department, just like any restaurant or any other business, especially in the food industry, having our commercial kitchen. So there's little things that everyone has to understand. Yeah, just do your do your work and try to be successful. But definitely there is regulations. Just like any business, you just have to be able to find <laughs> the right paperwork, I guess. We didn't even mention the menu, your guys' menu. Like for people listening uh, that might not even be familiar, never had anything from Cluck Truck before. Uh, so it's it's mostly chicken items. I mean, what what are some of the items that you have I mean, that uh, if you want to kind of share with the listeners here? Man, I would never stop if you gave me to talk about food. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'll let Gentry start it with that. And then I guess I'll just pitch in. Like I said, I can talk about food all day. So uh, obviously we sell chicken. (laughs) We'd we'd be a bad truck if we didn't sell chicken called the cluck truck. So what we have is an all white meat chicken tenderloin. We brine it for 24 hours and then we uh, dredge it in a cornflake dredge. So it's not like a traditional Southern fried chicken. That's very kind of like heavy and greasy, like a little bit fattier because they use like a chicken thigh. So ours is an all white breast. So we can, you can do it like with a chicken fried basket or we do it in like gourmet chicken wraps. So we have four different wraps that are on the menu all the time. And then we have different specials. So we have daily specials we do every day. So we actually just started doing a chicken sandwich that's breaded in the same dredge, but it's actually chicken thigh. (laughs) So we do have chicken thighs now. Yeah, wraps, sandwiches. Uh, We we do Taco Tuesday. Yeah, we definitely specialize in gourmet fried chicken. That's our thing with our own twist. So it's uh, like she was saying, not your traditional fried chicken. There is this recipe even now. So we use cornflakes for our dredge. So we hand batter our chicken every single day. Uh, we try to make it as fresh as possible. Obviously, there's no local chicken farms in Salt Lake City that I can just we can just go and grab. But we do try to get the freshest, even if it's being shipped from uh, Mississippi. There's a lot of farms in Mississippi. Sometimes we get shipments from Illinois. Uh, but it's about five days from when it was processed and get to Salt Lake City. And within five, seven days, five days or so, we should be able to grab it. But we definitely pride ourselves, try to make sure that the the crust on the outside, our chicken dredge, we we make it from scratch. So it's a cornflake dredge and with some seasoning spices that we create to make it our own style. All right, we're going to take just a couple of minutes and talk about one of our awesome sponsors. We love Arc Insurance. Health insurance open enrollment is going on right now, and it only lasts for a few weeks. There are five great reasons why you should be using a health insurance broker like ARC Insurance. Number one, you're going to get expert advice. ARC agents can match you with the best plan for your needs. Number two, no additional cost. Fees to use a broker are paid by the health insurance carriers and not you. Number three, you will save time. It can take hours to do this on your own. Let ARC help. Number four, you will save money. ARC will help you find a plan with the lowest possible cost with the best coverage. And number five, get the best health care. Having the best health insurance means you get better access to care when you need it. To make an appointment today, visit ARCUtah.com. That's A-R-K-Utah.com. Or call 801-901-7800.
Is there any items like, you know how you see food trucks with just some of the most off the wall items, right? Do you guys ever like think of stuff like that? And you're like, gosh, I don't know. If, I don't know if that would work though. I mean, I don't know. Are there, is there like any off the wall menu items that you're like, yeah, there is. that you want to put time. up? All the time, every single day, man. There's times it's like, man. So we got inspired even with uh, loaded chicken cheese fries. Our most, one of our most popular off the menu items is our loaded chicken cheese fries. Long name, but super popular. People want to come on a Monday and get their carbs on, like hardcore. And it, there's a lot of ingredients that go into it. We describe it kind of like the nachos. But the club truck way, um, instead of chips, we're using fries. So you have crispy French fries, uh, some cheese, a three a cheese blend with some crispy bacon. We house made make our sauces, chipotle lime sauce that we smother our fries with for the loaded fries. And then the crispy bacon or fried chicken, fresh pico de gallo that goes on there. So kind of like the concept of a nacho, but with fries. You're making yeah, me hungry. It's, it's a, definitely a fan favorite. Making me hungry here. <laughs> talking about all this food. What do you have? Do you have a favorite item? What's your favorite item on the menu? My personal favorite would have to be the original wrap. Okay. Um, it has two of our house made sauces the mango jalapeno slaw, very unique, savory, got a little bit of spice to it, and our fried chicken. We top it off with our house made chipotle lime sauce, and then we wrap it uh, with our 12 inch flour tortilla. And that right there is as simple as it is, but it's definitely super flavorful. Fan favorite. That, yeah, I would always recommend. If someone wants to come up to my food truck, definitely the original wrap, I would recommend. And then our chicken over crispy fries. And then we serve it with two sauces of your choice. But the original is my favorite. It does sound good. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Where are you guys parked at right now? I'll come right now, you know? <laughs> hey, what's your... lunch this afternoon, but... <laughs> <laughs> what's, like, doing this for two years now, what is... There's got to be, like, one thing that you just love about it that sticks out above the rest. I mean, is there one or two things that you just love about owning and running a food truck? I would say the number one thing is just being able to, like, interact with people. We're both people people so we love i love being able to go places and like meet new people but not necessarily meeting new people but just like the community that you build and the people that you see all the time i would say you know on thursday we were at fisher brewery and i would say 80 percent of the people that came to eat it was you know them by name you know what they want to eat you're like hey how are you hey happy birthday last week you know congratulations i know you just bought a house like it's more building the relationships with people. I think that's what probably our favorite thing is. It's just being able to go out there and be be part of the community, like feel like you kind of like know people, you know, and you know, like people are like, send you like an Instagram message, like, oh, please say you guys are here today. Like I've had the worst day. I need to come get some cluck truck. And you're like, <laughs> we'll be here. Like, what's going on? Why are you having a bad day? You know? I would say that just like the ability to like meet new people, yeah. feel like you're part of the community. A hundred percent, a thousand percent agree. The bond, the bond that we have that we, I never thought that I would experience um, being able to be in part of this community in, in a whole sense. Uh, it's a domino effect and that thrives me. Like I love it. We Salt Lake city itself. Like, you know, we're very unique. Well, yes, we're in Utah, but Salt Lake is very unique <laughs> in yep. their own way. It is, and the yeah. bond that we create in that city is amazing. I, th I think the other cool thing about having like a food truck versus like a brick and mortar restaurant is you get to go to events. You can go to, you know, Reggae Rise Up and you're at a concert and there's live music playing and there's, you know, this or that. Or you can go to, you know, Lantern Fest and they're so you like it you get to go to events, which is kind of cool as well. Rather than being in the same spot all the time, you're at a new spot every day. Well at least we are. And, you we, know. and we try to bring that that excitement, that experience, because we are a mobile unit, a mobile restaurant. So we bring in an experience to Harriman. We bring in an experience to the people in in Ogden or Layton. So when we go like they understand, oh, where are you guys from? Salt Lake City. In a way, it's it's very gratitude, humble gratitude. Like, wow, we're we're building a community and <laughs> every everyone in, in, in their own. Like that right there, being part of that is is really cool. Really cool. 
Now you mentioned, you mentioned like kind of the freedom of having a food truck versus a brick and mortar restaurant uh, establishment. I mean, have you thought about creating a brick and mortar uh, cluck restaurant or whatnot instead of the cluck truck would be the cluck house, cluck house, or there you go. There you go. The chicken house, <laughs> um, I guess, or something. Huh? Eventually, yes, eventually, yes. in all honesty, yes. Um, who, why, why, why I want to say, you know, I, I would be lying to you if I would have told you that I never thought about ha- owning a brick and mortar, that it would be a flat out lie. Uh, yes, I would definitely in would part want to have a brick and mortar. Um, that's how we got into the whole cluck truck industry in the first place. Cause we wanted to have a gastro pub. It was too expensive. And, you know, this backstory that we can get into, but. Um, I would love to have a brick and mortar for the cluck truck at some point. So it has been thought of. We, we we thought about it. We enjoy this too much. This is awesome. We love the food truck community. Everyone that we work with, everyone that we've met, it's it's amazing. The community in itself, it's it's a great bond. So to answer your question, yes, we have thought about a brick and mortar in the future. Now you guys won the best food truck, right? For City Weekly Best of Utah Awards, the 2020. Yeah, is that correct? We, we did. That was that was very That's crazy. exciting. That's crazy. <laughs> and I mean, were you expecting that or do you think? I mean, have you won before or how no, did you feel? No, I mean, it's never. a funny story too. Uh I think we were at home watching Brooklyn Nine Nine or something, Gentry and I just chilling at the house and I mean I was so 2019 a little before that so 2019 we I mean I've always heard of best of Utah and stuff I just I mean we were we're a little fish in a big pond is how we look at ourselves compared to (laughs) a lot of the other food trucks out there so 2019 they called and they said oh hey you're a finalist for best of Utah food truck and we were like what you know (laughs) so that was we were like that that's so cool you know we were super excited um so we went to the Best of Utah party last year, and it was Waffle Love and Cup Bop. Cup Bop won, right? right last year, last year I think so, yeah. Bop, Cup And then Waffle Love took second, and we took third, and we were like, oh, my gosh. We were just we were just so excited to be even in the top three. We were like, that's so cool. So this year, they called and said it again, and I was told Phil, I was like, maybe we can move to number two. <laughs> like, I didn't think we would be number one. Yeah, and a friend sends me a message and says, hey, congrats on Best of Utah. And I was like what are you talking about? She's like, I'm like, it doesn't come out till Thursday. And this was on Tuesday. She goes, no, it's online. You won. And mm-hmm. I was like, what? And she screenshots it and sends it to me. So I was like, we won, we won. <laughs> so we were so- very excited. We weren't expecting it. It's <laughs> a pretty big deal. It's a big deal here in Utah to get that, you know, I mean, at least oh, in, yeah. in, in my eyes, it is, especially when you go in these restaurants or whatnot and you see it, the plaque up on the wall and you're just like, all right, this is good food. You know, it's like, you yeah. know, it's good food or, or, or a good place, whatever, whatever they're winning for. It might not be, uh, yeah. you know, food related, but uh, it's, it's uh, hey, congratulations. Yeah. Thank thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. Right. I saw you guys had your best of Utah. I was listening to your podcast with a uh, Papito Mo's and I know you guys were, were plug in to, to vote for it. So that's awesome. I, do you guys work with them a lot? Uh, with uh, Papito Mo's? Oh no, just like with City Weekly. Like, oh. are you guys just big, like... No, yeah, I'm well. I mean, through the years, I mean, I've been doing the podcast here for eight years, like I said. So I've just uh, chatted, and and I mean, we've won best podcast like four years doing it. So yeah. just with that and going to the parties, and then what they've done, and I mean, we had John Saltis, the uh, the guy who started City Weekly. He was on I Am Salt Lake, and and uh, I mean, we've just become good friends over the years. So at least, I, at least, I, at least, I consider them friends. Hopefully, they consider me friends. So. <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, That's I know cool. it's it's cool. it's fun. It's fun though. All right, we're going to take just a minute talk about one of our awesome sponsors, UtahMarijuana.org. I love these guys. They are your number one spot for all things medical marijuana, medical cannabis, CBD, and THC. UtahMarijuana.org's team of medical cannabis experts makes getting your medical card easy from the first office visit to navigating the state card application and beyond. And I can tell you firsthand that with over 20 compassionate and highly skilled qualified medical care providers ready to help you find relief, you won't have to search for a doctor willing to recommend cannabis treatment. These guys are amazing, and I know because I recently went there and got my letter, and I'm waiting to receive my card, the final step, and they have literally helped me every step of the way. 
I don't think I could have done this without them because there are too many questions. There are too many unknowns and, and things that you need to follow up. And they really make it as simple as possible. They made it as simple as possible for me to understand how to get to the dispensary, what to look for, what to do. And I just, I cannot recommend these guys enough. They are the most incredible team of of healthcare professionals I've experienced. And right now, they're offering an exclusive discount to I Am Salt Lake listeners. Use the code GREEN25 for $25 off your first visit. And if you're in the West Valley City area, check this out because utahmarijuana.org, they have a brand new office there. It's 3615 West, 1987 South, Building 8 in West Valley City. So depending on where you're at in the valley, they got a location for you. Isn't it time that you took control of your own health? UtahMarijuana.org. Feel better. How is how is 2020 been for for uh, the food trucks for Cluck Truck? I mean, has it been a challenge to kind of stay busy and to find oh, yeah. events and to find customers? Has that been a bit yes, of a sir. challenge? Yeah, it, I mean, has. it has been a challenge for everyone, just like any small business. We definitely took a plunge with COVID. We probably, yeah, about I wouldn't 45%. Say a plunge. I think or you our just lunches. Have to, I think you just lunches. have to pivot, though. I don't think it's about trying to. I think if you're going to be successful, you can't look at it as like, oh, all this is gone. You just have to pivot and change oh, yeah, of course. your game plan to what you're doing to fit the current situation. So things are definitely different. We went from doing, I mean, especially in the fall and winter time, we were probably 85% lunches and 15% dinner shifts. And now it's probably 80% dinner shifts. So we have 20% lunches. So it's definitely pivoted. It's, it's flip-flopped as far as like serving times. But I feel like you just have to keep going. I don't think that it's definitely been a challenge, but I wouldn't say. But it also brought us together in the community with food trucks trying to be successful, but also be part of the community in a way doing what we wanted, what we love to do. Try to come together and with dinners. Sorry, I don't know what that like little round is. I will be right back. Sorry. Well, it was, uh, yeah, you know, we're going under construction here. I don't know if it was one of our. Sorry. You're, 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 I, I appreciate your time with me tonight, you know? So, I mean, things are kind of slow things. How can people in the community support you if they're like, I know a lot of people still aren't comfortable with going out or not going out as much, or there really aren't as many of events. Is there a way to like buy gift cards or uh, buy like I know you guys have shirts and stuff too, right? Yeah. So we have our merchandise isn't online. You have to buy it on the truck, but we do have gift cards online on the truck. So we do partnership and so you can always get like takeout food to go. I feel like food trucks are more, I feel like we have a little bit of an advantage as far as COVID because you're not eating in a dine-in location. Pretty much it's to go all the time. But we do have so, gift cards on the truck. Uh, do you do e-gift cards to support us? Our, our, we have a cluttruckutah.com website. And I don't know, Gentry usually works our back end a lot. Uh, and the people buy gift cards on there. So, yeah, so on our website. And then gift cards personally, too. Yeah, because this, so this episode will actually be up right before Christmas. So if they want... There'll be a few days there. Like if they, if, if they listen to this right before Christmas, you can get somebody a gift card, right? For Cluck mm-hmm. Truck. And then that way you're supporting local and then yes, you're getting sir. some awesome food truck. And then, I mean, the same thing with January, February, right? Buy some gift cards and then use them over the summer, right? Like help you guys get, oh, through, yeah. get through the winter months. Eat local in Utah, you know, take out Tuesday, shop, support small local businesses. I, Oh man, that's amazing. That's that's us too. Even us having to eat out almost, you know, a lot of the times out of the week, we try to go as local as possible as well and try to support the local, the local, the local restaurants as much as possible, even for coffee. If you're going to get a coffee in the midday or whatnot, it's very important and it's super cool. Do you get along with the other food truck? people pretty good or i mean you guys all get along pretty good (laughs) we try at least i think so i hope so like oh i'm gonna tuck my hat and say i hope i do we try no i we we have i have a lot of respect for a wide variety of food trucks man i can go on on the love and respect that i have we have (laughs) we actually have a sticker on our truck that says community not competition so we always try and view it more as like a food truck community um, we're, you know, like a food truck co-op almost like 
if I grow, you grow, if you grow, I grow, like you have somebody to bounce ideas off of to, you know, if you're having, like, I feel like having a community of, of trucks is going to make every truck more successful where, you know, say we're having an issue with something, you can reach out like, Hey, what are you guys doing about this? Or somebody can reach out to you like, Hey, you guys are super good at your menu design. Like, how do you do that? You know, um, just being able to reach out to people and have, I feel like having a community of trucks is a lot better than every man for himself or every truck. Yeah. And then you plus, know, honestly, contacts mean a lot in this industry too. Yeah. Sorry, what we can? Oh, no, I was just going to say, and then plus if you're, you know, in good terms, then you guys can, you know, park together. And I mean, look at like, you know, any of the fast food joints. I mean, they're on every, you know, they get on corners by yeah. each other and that's why they're successful. So I'd imagine it's the same way with food trucks, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. A kid might want to go get some chicken and fries from club truck, but then their parents want to go get Jamaica's kitchen and grab some ethnic, you know, chicken and rice type of dinner. And then you have local waffle for dessert or something like that. So it's, it, it's a great win-win situation and you're supporting local. And yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. Now in, in you're married. How is that working out? I mean, is that, it's tough to work with your significant other and your, your spouse. I mean, is that, uh, has that been a <laughs> challenge? Everyone that every single day. That's crazy. Uh, it, it is, but I think you just, uh, we met each other at work. So it, it's kind of, it's been something we've always done like off and on. So it isn't too bad. We actually, when we first opened the truck, it was just Phil. I actually was doing real estate full time and, um, the truck just got so busy. We thought it needed both of our attention full time. So I left that to come work on the truck. But I mean, it's good. Everybody has, I would say we get along pretty well most of the time. <laughs> for, most of the time. For being spouses well, and working you know, together. Yes. No, I love it. In in honesty, I do. Uh, but it is very challenging to work, to, to separate home and business life. I can't speak to her when we're working. I have to speak to her in a different, in a different tone or like, I can't ask ask her to do something in a certain tone or certain way. I have to choose. It's not what you say it's how you say, it. especially in a relationship. We're business partners as well. And we make a great team, <laughs> but yeah, I, you I, just have to be able to, to know how you're saying it and respect each other at all terms, just like any other person. And I think we're, I think, but we make a killer team. We make, we make a killer team. I'm, I'm lucky in general, even meeting her parents. I'm lucky. Like it's so <laughs> cool. We have a great relationship in that sense. Like her dad is one of my best friends. So, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is, that's, yes, sir. It's awesome, and I mean, I would imagine it gets tough. I mean, because I've been inside a food truck, it gets tight in those things. You know, there's not it a does, lot of no, there's not yeah. a lot it of does, room. But if you know, if you're gonna bump, if you're gonna be bumping into somebody, you know, it's it's better to be bumping into your you know your spouse, your best friend, your significant other than mm. some you know somebody else. So. I mean, all in all, I feel like we're pretty lucky. I have a lot of friends who have said, I can never work with my boyfriend. I can never work with my husband. I'm like, I feel weird not going to work with him. Like, (laughs) But then again, if somebody comes and orders some chicken with fries and she didn't drop the French fries, I'm going to say, Gentry, why did you not drop the fries? (laughs) Sorry, sir. Excuse me, Chris. Uh, It's going to be eight minutes now. (laughs) But no, you know, it's just things like that. Like what? (laughs) But it's all fun and games as well. And hey, we're out here feeding one person at a time. Having a good time with it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, where are the two of you from? Where did you guys grow up? Are you from Utah, the both of you, or where's home for you two? Personally, I myself, I grew up in Wisconsin. Um, I no moved kidding. around. Um, yes, I moved around. The, I grew up at a young age in California, but my main years, I would say I'm more Wisconsin. And then I made my roots in Salt Lake City. And yeah, this is where we build our roots or for myself and so I'm more of a Utah now, but I say Wisconsin is home for me. Now, where in Wisconsin? My wife is from Wisconsin. Who's supposed, to, my, who's supposed to be here go pack, go. co-hosting go pack, go. the podcast with me? Hopefully she jumps on here. I don't know. She might get the tail end of this. Well, come but, on, and your daughter, too. Everyone's at work now. Uh, what, what is it? O- 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 Oconomowoc? Have you heard of Oconomowoc? Oconomowoc? O- hmm. I, I think I'm saying it right. It's, where? it's near. I visited it once. Uh they, I'm trying to think it's near, I know we, we, it's not far from Milwaukee. I, I remember we, we took a bus okay. into Milwaukee cause we were in Chicago. So we went up there for the weekend from Chicago. Anyway. So yeah, we went into Milwaukee and then her dad got us. It was like an hour. Anyway, th- it's beautiful. 
Well, Keegan, maybe. Oh, I just I'm um, I'm looking it up right now. Oh, it's is it it's, like uh, uh, I think it's probably a reservation, right? Like west of was uh, uh, Milwaukee. Oh, it's it's yes, just west of Milwaukee. Yeah, I know yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's the road. It's it's on your way to Madison. So it's like yeah. it looks like it's almost halfway between Milwaukee and Madison. Is that yeah. right? <laughs> so, yeah. So it's a little bit west. I I've never been. So that's where your your wife is from. Yeah, so she's from there. Her her family, her she grew up there. Her family's all from there. They were all living there, and and then they all eventually just moved out here to Utah. And she only has like one sister left in Wisconsin. So, okay. so they're. Uh, so is have she you a gone? Packers fan? <laughs> uh, she's well. She's not really into sports, but uh, and then I visited uh, Wisconsin just one time. I've only gotten to go out there the one time to visit okay. them, and, and it was fun. We got to do some water skiing and uh, just hang out on the lake or one of the lakes. She had so many lakes yeah. there, I and I don't even remember the name of the lake or anything like that. Um, but it was fun. Beautiful, yeah. Be- beautiful place. Beautiful place. Yeah, no, that's so. That's what I call home, and uh, we try to incorporate that sometimes in our food as well. Cheese curds. <laughs> Hopefully, they're coming. <laughs> a lot, a lot of dairy in Wisconsin. I had a lot of. Uh, gosh, what did they call that? What did they call it? It has a different name. Uh, it doesn't matter. Dairyland. I can't remember. Now, what about you, Gentry? Where are you from? Uh, I was I was born in Salt Lake. I, I grew up in Utah. Never left. Not, not too far away. <laughs> she went to I, Hunter I High in, School. She's from yeah. West Valley. <laughs> I grew up in West Valley. Uh, yes, when I was younger. I lived in Las Vegas for like two years after I graduated. Uh, I worked for U.S. Airways and their their hub is in Las Vegas. So I lived there for a very short amount of time. And then I moved back to Salt Lake. All right. Well, that's awesome. There's a few. Yeah. Uh, we have a few standard Salt Lake City questions that we like to ask everybody that comes through here. So as we kind of shift to that direction of the podcast. Uh, there, you know, there are just some fun questions like, you know, you have family and friends that visit you. They come to town, they're coming to Salt Lake and they're like, give us the tour, show us around. I know we, we bring some people on the podcast that their tour might be, you know, the mountains or park city even, or, you know, the lake, or I don't know if there's certain things you guys like to show people when they visit. Definitely outdoorsy type stuff. If they were coming to Salt Lake city proper, I would say we'd probably, hit up a few of the breweries, probably TF Brewery, Fisher, and then we'd probably go eat somewhere. Well, where would well, depends what them? you want. I don't know. Uh, Purgatory. Purgatory is awesome. Purgatory would probably be where we would go. Purgatory is one of the places I would take people to for sure. Really good food. Uh, brunch menu is awesome. Uh, one of the best brunch menus, I think. Copper onion, if you want to go get some dinner. But yeah, um, if you're in Salt Lake City, and then obviously take them to Park City if they want to. Well, it depends. Go to Deer Valley. They just opened up. Let's go get some skis or snowboard. Well, no snowboard in Deer Valley, but get some skis. <laughs> so hang out with some friends. Skiing would be your thing. Yeah, or snowmobiling. But yeah, when they come to Salt Lake City, definitely want to go take them out, pick them up from the airport, take them to a local brewery, um, go to TF, go to their outdoor patio, have a couple of German style beers, um, get some food from the local food truck that's outside. And, and, and then do that for, for, yeah. <laughs> that Sounds great to me. me. If you could change one or two things about Salt Lake city, is there anything you would change about it or the Valley, right? The area, is there anything that you were just like, if you had the power to change something? Wow. That's a big power. That's a huge um. power. <laughs> some people are big things and some people are like, you know, the, the liquor laws, I mean, it's been air quality liquor laws. Some people say nothing, you know, Hey, I, I don't want to change anything. I, I do love Salt Lake. I think Salt Lake is great. Um, I love, I love the diversity of being downtown. I feel like when you're downtown, things are more, uh, just a little bit more diverse. You have more diverse type of food. There's diverse type of people. I, I wish kind of like the whole Valley could be like that, like have the same, like kind of vibe as Salt Lake city but just extend it out to the rest of the valley. That's what I would say. Yeah. I don't know. I like I'm that. I'm sorry. That was no. kind of on the spot. <laughs> I know. I like it. And I, and I get it. I get it's on the spot. Now I like that. That's a good answer. Actually. That's I would, I would, if I could change anything, I would probably add another urban feel to Salt Lake city, like a mini Liberty park, something outdoorsy, something that recreates the city in, in a modern, but also very, very humble way. Like, having bike trails, you know, uh, right in the downtown area. They already are, but having another like big park, like Liberty Park, something like that, something urban, something artsy, something, yeah, in that aspect, something outdoorsy. We 
It sounds great to me, man. Sounds <laughs> Dude, I, I am so... I'm so glad I reached out to you, uh, to, to bring you to on the podcast and, and chat with you about the food truck and kind of get to know the two of you a little bit better. I mean, that's kind of the, been the fun of doing this podcast is a lot of times, you know, we see these people, we'll see you at the food truck, but we don't know you, right? We don't know who yeah. is, is, yeah. is the people behind the, the scene. So it's get it's fun to get to know the people. Yeah. Um, no, we love, we love camping, love mountain biking. Mountain biking is big. Uh, like I said, family time, mountain biking, being outdoorsy, going hiking. That's us. That's our family. Disneyland. We love Disney. Gentry loves Disney. We're Disney nerds for sure. Annual pass holders over. Yeah, all that. That's us, man. Disneyland, family, camping, hiking, uh, mountain biking, city biking. That's our family. When you come to the Clark truck, that's what you're you're coming to meet, man. You're coming to meet us. Like we're just your next door neighbor, but we're out here trying to provide some killer food at the same time and shopping. <laughs> yeah. Being ourselves in the community. That's who you're supporting. That's who we are. I love it. That is awesome. See, that's, it, it just shows you guys that, you know, you're real people, you're real people. <laughs> hey, before, so how can listeners connect with you? What's the website, the uh, social media and all that? And is there anything that you you were hoping we would talk about, like maybe even want to promote or anything uh, before we wrap this episode up? Yeah. Websites, clucktruckutah.com. Uh, that's our Instagram and Facebook as well. It's just at clucktruckutah. Yeah, our website, clucktruckutah.com. Promote, you know, our food, I guess. Just Very cool. Our, our, our chicken, fried chicken with fries uh, right there, right next to Pretty Bird, you know, hold ourselves with high standards, so. Hopefully we can keep on clicking away for the city. But right, our fried chicken, come try it. Like we take a lot of pride and a lot of passion. We will definitely take a lot of passion. So come on by, try us out. And they could the, the schedules on your Instagram and and or the website and all that, so they can see where you're at. Yes, yes. Sir. Uh, post our schedule every uh, Sunday on Instagram and Facebook. It's on the website as well. If you click it, it just links you to our social media, so you can pull it up that way. It's probably the best way to look at it. And, and and I'm serious. If you're listening, go get some gift cards, right? Because you got to support local because if you love these businesses and you want them to stay around, we got to support you and keep you around, right? So anyway, it's been, it's been fun to have you on the show. Now, Chrissy normally asks everybody a final question. She's not here tonight. So I'm going to ask you, and I know okay. it's kind of, I know, I know it's kind of, you know, putting you on the spot, but Hey, we'll see what happens here. Can you leave the listeners with a motto or piece of life advice? Just, I don't know, first thing that comes to mind. I mean, it's been everything from, I don't know, work hard or, or you know, I don't know, whatever comes to mind. If you're the smartest person in the room, you might not be in the right room. That's a perfect place to end the show unless Gentry wants to add anything. Find a way to do what you love. That was what I was going to say. <laughs> so. Find a good mentor. Find a good mentor as well. Mentor someone, someone who is successful. You know, definitely mentor someone you and then find, yeah, a mentor. find a mentor. Yeah. Find a mentor, someone who's going to motivate you and give you that oomph. Go get it. Definitely try to find yourself a mentor that can give you the oomph to every day. Go and get it harder than the next person. All right. Thanks again to Phil and Gentry Davies for joining me on this episode of the podcast. All of the links that we talked about in this conversation, they can be found with our episode notes on our podcast website. That can be found at IamSaltLake.com slash 463 for episode 463. And go ahead, if you want to share this episode, you can share it right there from that link as well. And as I've already said, this Friday is Christmas. And even if you don't celebrate Christmas, it's a great time of year to get out and support local. And if you need a last minute gift, remember to go out and support local. Especially right now, there are so many small businesses struggling, so let's help them out as much as possible. And if you want to help out some great local businesses, you can always go check out the supporters of this podcast at supportsaltlake.com. All right. You guys have a great week. Get out and enjoy the city. Take a brisk walk or something and pick up those last minute gifts that you need. And we're going to see you next week on the next episode of I Am Salt Lake Podcast. And good night, Grammy.